With over 200 flavor notes to discover, every sip of Woodford Reserve bourbon is a spectacle for the senses. What's going on, everybody? Talk about a hype video to get this going. So welcome. We are selecting, as you would guess, a barrel of Woodford Reserve, but we're doing double oak this time so this will be fun uh what you just saw right there was a commercial that is going to be played for uh derby that's the that's the kind of a preview for the derby commercial that's going to happen here i think in two weeks september 5th is what we're going to be looking at so you just got a, a first sneak peek at it so pretty awesome to be able to do that so you all know me my name's kenny uh unfortunately ryan is not going to be able to be joining us tonight he had a he lost a member of his family today so uh, he's kind of just hanging out, spending time with his family today. So we're not, I mean, we're sad to not, he's not going to be here, but we'll, uh, we'll pick a good one out in his honor. So before we kind of get cracking here, uh, we got to go ahead and introduce our tasting panel, people that are be selecting this barrel with us. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hand it over to Rick first. So Rick, just go ahead, uh, tell people a little bit about who you are, where you're from. And our question tonight to kind of get this kicked off is, what would you name a boat if you had one? <laughs> uh, my name is Rick Winters. Uh, I live in Waverly, Nebraska. It's uh, located between Lincoln and Omaha, a small town of about 3,500 people. Nice, quiet life. Um, if I had a boat, probably have to call it Denise after my wife. Oh, look at you. You're, you're pulling up those brownie points already, aren't you? Anything else and get me in trouble, probably. <laughs> Good deal. Uh, and Brett, what about you? I'm Brett. I live in Leadville, Colorado, the highest elevation city in North America. And if I had a boat, probably the, you know, there's not a lot of need for boats up here, but say the SS Hideaway. Oh, yeah? What, what, what Okay, what's the name about the SS Hideaway? Kind of, is there a story behind that? Um, just... I think if I get to be on a boat, I just want to hide away from everybody. Ah, uh, I like it. I like it. That's a good one. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I look at, I think of, for me, if I had a boat, I would look at probably the most iconic license plate of all time that I think of, and that's the Back to the Future's Out of Time one. But since it's a boat and we're all about bourbon, it'd be like out of bourbon. And so, uh, I, yeah, I maybe, like that, maybe that'll get people to like, you know, Toss a you know toss something in a plastic bottle over to me or something like that. <laughs> Good idea, for sure. So uh, we were actually talking before this. Uh, funny enough, so the way that this all happened, we were actually supposed to do the pick last week, and I tried sending these barrel samples out, and they just got lost or hung up in the mail or something like that. Didn't really know what happened. Like tracking didn't move for like five or six days, which is weird because usually the postal service is pretty good about it. I'm not going to tell much more about stuff like that. But uh, oddly enough, I got to talk to Brett's post uh, post office general, whatever postmaster there, and I was like, "Yeah, you got a really nice person." He's like, "Oh yeah, Greg." I'm like, "You you actually know the postmaster in your city? That's too cool." Yeah, <laughs> nice small town. We know everybody. Yeah, must be. That's really cool. So what we have going on tonight, uh, so we've got three different, they're called batches. So I'm going to try to hold this up. I'm trying not the new camera tonight. I'm trying with a GoPro. So that's why we kind of have a little of a wide angle lens here. But so we've got three different batches. Um, that's what everybody has right here. So you should have like uh, something that says like DO or uh, yeah, double oak one, double oak two or something like that. WDO one. Yep. Yep. See, I, I, I got real, um, you know, creative with it. And so these are already proofed down to 90.4 proof and they sent us 200 mls which got us around for four samples but we'll just have to see what ryan picks at a later date now they did send some some verbiage here i don't really think we're gonna need to uh, go into it too much but um you know they said you know close three samples of batched personal selection so what we know so far is that these are not technically single barrels these are like single blends if you will um and these samples are presented at batch proof and so batch means it's a what it will be when it's actually bottled and everything like that um blah 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 said we need a jigger i don't know why we would need a jigger but maybe to like pour water in or something 
But they say, as you nose and taste the samples in order, be sure to spit. I think we'll be all right. It says, add a half ounce of water per one ounce sample. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. I think at 90.4 proof, we're already we're already watered down enough. Yeah, I think we're watered down good. Yeah, <laughs> I'd say so too. So uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pour these out. I got three Glen Cairns here next to me. And so I'm just going to go ahead and sort of start putting these out, putting these in here. So, so do you guys have a good day today? How's everything on the, uh, you guys are what, central time? Is that what it is, both of you? Yes. I'm mountain time. Oh, yeah, you're mountain time. And yes, it was a good day. Not much happening out there in Leadville? Surprisingly, apparently everyone in uh, COVID-heavy states is coming here to hide because we've got tourists from all over the country up here. I, I mean, that's that's not far-fetched. I mean, that's usually people want to get away from those areas, and, and I'm, I'm assuming it's to go camping or hiking or just kind of do cabin sort of stuff around there. Is that what you got yeah. a lot of? Lots of campers up here. Lots of them hiding out in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And they're mostly friendly for most part, which is good. And I think they just want to escape the reality of wherever they're from. <laughs> we could all say that right now. For I sure. For that. Yeah. So the um, they also sent something here and it actually gives tasting notes for each batch. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and reserve that because I, I don't want to put put anything in y'all's head. So we'll uh, we'll make this interesting for us. So I know we were just talking before we had started. So this is actually Rick and Brett's first barrel pick experience mm -hmm. ever. So um, I'll try to be your Sherpa here and lead you as we go and make it make it nice and easy for you. But yeah, it will it'll, uh, it'll be fun. You know, this is actually the first Woodford double oak barrel selection that we've done. Uh, we've been doing a lot of things. I mean, yesterday we did two barrels of bullet. Uh, the week before then, we did Old Forester Barrel Proof. And, you know, and I'm glad. So Eric Carrico actually put it up here and saying that, you know, Double Oak is one of his favorite bourbons. Honestly, I think it, it's one of those bourbons that just doesn't get enough love. Um, you know, we've anybody that's been a bourbon fan for a while, like you get you get uh, you, know, you come across Woodford and you come across it pretty early. Um, but you know, after you get your first taste of it and you try double oak, then you start trying everything else. And sometimes you, you forget to kind of come back to it. I mean, what about you all? Have, have you been fans of Woodford or double oak in the past or anything like that? I'm a fan of double oak. I've got a store pick from total wine over there and I've got the batch, which the batch select the new one. Oh, the, uh, Oh, the, the barrel proof version, right? Yeah, 2021. Yeah. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. That's what I'll tell you what, that'll be the next thing. Start letting us do this like barrel proof and we'll exactly. see where it goes. So what about you, Rick? You got any uh, experience with Woodford in your life? A little bit. Um, we, we visited out there uh, at the end of October last year. First time in Kentucky. Um, got to see the pumpkins. That was cool. The pumpkins? In uh, Louisville there. Yeah. Anyway, uh, no, we visited Woodford and uh, I'm a big fan. Um I'm probably uh, a little more of a rookie than than uh, the rest of you guys in bourbon. Haven't been drinking it that um, hard and steady for that many years, but I am a big fan. Well, Looking it's okay. To this. You're here now. That's what all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, it's I made you, a comment in the chat about us starting a band because I just noticed Rick has a guitar. I have a guitar. <laughs> I'll tell you what, here, hold on one second. I'll get my guitar down, show everybody. Rick's got several guitars. Do you play in a band, Brett? I did in the old days, played some hard rock and heavy metal. Cool. Now, before I uh, put my headphones on, now, before I show everybody this, uh, I have to tell you that I do actually don't know how to play guitar. So... This was this was something that was a, a gift um, from somebody who actually uh, from Big G, Big D Guitars. You can go check him out online, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, so he actually turned Pursuit Series number one, our barrel that we did for our private label, into this guitar. So it is actually a bourbon barrel guitar. On the back here, there's the uh, the barrel head stamp and everything like that. And uh, it means awesome. 
That's and then also, also shout out to Michael's custom straps. He actually made me a custom strap for this as well. So very awesome. I mean, I, I can at least do this to you, but that's about as, that's about as much as I know I can do. So <laughs> sweet. Still a beautiful guitar. Yeah. Well, we could start, we, we played a band, we start a band together. I could probably play a mean triangle, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, Maybe. I can't sing, so if you can sing, you're in. Oh, you're you're out of luck on that one. I I was never definitely not born with good vocal cords either. Not for singing, that's for sure. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start nosing. I, I'll tell you what, the the nose on this one's already phenomenal. I love it. I'm getting like some definitely a lot of caramel, vanilla notes. A little bit of apple. Yep, I was about to say apple, dried fruit. Um, even with the apple, like. Have you all ever had like those dried apple crisps before? Yeah. Um, like apple chips or something like that? Definitely get that kind of oh, on yeah. it. Vanilla, yes. Now, if you choose an apple, I'll, I'll ask you this. So if you got a favorite apple, what kind is it? Are you a, you a, a Red Delicious? Red Delicious. A actually. Granny Smith? Yeah, Red Delicious. Red, what about you, Rick? I like the Granny Smith, I think. Probably best if I had a choice. Uh, I would say, you know, Gallows are pretty good, but honey crisp apples for life. Like, I don't think there's anything better than a honey crisp apple. I think it goes to show they're always, they're always so damn expensive at the supermarket, too. It's probably why I stick with Red Delicious. <laughs> there you go. See, Caroline's on my side. Honey crisp for life, right there. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna smell through these first, and then I'm gonna go for the taste. That's typically just how I work. But you feel free to uh, move in any direction you want. So um, I really don't have too much more information for you all, except that basically we have three samples, all from Woodford Reserve. They're double oak. Uh, so we have batch one, batch two, batch three, and they have uh, they give us a little thing that has a little bit of like the the nuances of the flavors. But I'm not gonna. I'm not going to spoil it. That doesn't sound like very much fun. And to me, it looks like one's darker than two. Let me see if I can hold it to the camera. So I actually was able to uh, pull out my, uh, my Woodford Glen Cairn for this one. So that was fun. So here's one on, on this side and here's two on this side. So they're both, let's try to put it in the light a little bit there. Yeah, they're, they're pretty close, but I could, I could see a little bit of discrepancy. See if I can get it a little bit closer to the camera for anybody, but a little more spice than number two, maybe. Toasted bread in number two. Brett, I'm glad you're here, man. You're gonna pick up Ryan Slack when it comes to the uh all the tasting notes. I appreciate it. I don't think I can be a Ryan though. <laughs> Not many people can. <laughs> oh. We got a lot of people talking about apples in the uh, in the chats here a lot of people talking about honey crisp granny smith's granny smith there you go pink lady i don't think i've ever had a pink lady i don't think i have either now that you think about it not too sure i wonder if they talked about you know the double oak i mean for anybody that doesn't know essentially double oak it's uh it's just rebarreled Woodford Reserve, right? So that's why it's it's going to have a lot more pronounced flavors. Um, it definitely darker, um, so it goes into a new charred oak barrel for a second time. And typically, Woodford is, I think it's around like four to six years old. So two seems a little stronger, a little hotter, maybe. Three kind of goes away on the nose. I was thinking two, three's a little bit lighter. A little bit. I the thing is, I don't think they're they don't vary too much in, in the nose. No. They're just more toasted on number two. Just gonna write down some notes real quick. Yeah, that's what I'm doing too. So I really like the nose on one, I think. 
I'm gonna keep going. It's definitely got like a like the more I keep going at it, like a cornbread, uh, like a buttered cornbread sort of smell going on too. Uh, so Chris asks, how old are these samples? I mean, we don't know exactly how old they are. They don't say, but Woodford is typically four to six years old. And this is, at least for double oaked, this is technically not a single barrel. It's a batch, I guess, is what you can call it. I have no idea if they sit there and say like, oh, well, you're going to get, you know, two or three barrels worth. But I don't think that's the, I don't think that's part of it. Uh, Tyler, mm -hmm. new camera. I don't have a new camera. It's actually a GoPro, but I'm trying it out this time. So we'll just see see how it works. It might sound strange, but three kind of gives me a juicy fruit gum thing. Oh, don't I don't say strange because that sounds delicious. I was trying to figure out what it was, and then it finally hit me. Yeah, I can I can kind of get that off of there too. But one's just caramel vanilla. Let's see. John asks, do we have a commit to a certain number of cases or how does the purchasing work? Um, I don't know. Uh, I think it just shows up. I, I'm going to imagine they just like figure out like what an average barrel is. Maybe it's like 150 bottles and they're like, here you go. You just get that. I'm just guessing. I honestly have no idea. All right. Enough nosing. I'm gonna I'm gonna go in for the taste on one here and start tasting them through the line. Not bad. There's not really too much spice there. Um, trying to trying to pinpoint what that is. I mean, it's just like a, a heavy, like toffee. Really, like, like it's it's. There's definitely a creaminess too. Creaminess, yes. It's got good flavor, but like I said, the finish the finish is like not really there for me. But then again, we're sitting here. I'm sitting here trying to like write some stuff that we're getting ready to do and launch uh, some new things for Patreon and. And, you know, the finish is always going to be different for everybody. So if you are relatively new to bourbon, you might be like, oh, wow, this is insane. Versus somebody that has been around for a while and you've been drinking, you know, 130 proof whiskeys pretty regularly. You might be like, eh, it's, it's a little okay. But the nose is really good on one. Get some vanilla kind of waffly flavor. Yep. And that's what when you say waffly. There's definitely a little bit of uh, like a hint of maple syrup in there. Yeah. I want to see if that if that note becomes more pronounced with two or three. Well, two is definitely sweeter to me. Okay. And more breakfast syrup. More like uh, more maple or more like uh, like heavy infused fruit. Cor fructose corn syrup kind of uh, syrup maple syrup there you go <laughs> see it happy to be doing their first woodford pick though so i'm glad to be doing something unique yeah i think two is sweeter Definitely is. I think it definitely hits a little more of that maple syrup note too. Man, a little longer finish than one to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm going to guess that none of these are going to have crazy long finishes because it's 90 proof, 90.4. But it is definitely going to be something that you're going to sip on. You're going to get a ton more flavor out of it than I think anything else. I mean, it's great because... Even at four to six years old, anybody that doesn't know Woodford, Brown Foreman, Old Forester, they, they heat cycle their warehouses. So 
they technically say that it, it goes two seasons longer every single year. So they like to say that this would be a six to eight or above bourbon, but it's technically four to six. Let's see. Somebody asked, "How would this work if we did the pick at Woodford?" That's a good question. I don't. Really, I don't really know what we would have done. We've never done a pick at Woodford. Um, I've done, and I will say, I've done the tour at Woodford. And whenever somebody comes from out of town and they've never been to Kentucky, I always say go to Woodford because Woodford is like quintessential Kentucky. Because as you're going towards it, it is rolling hills and horse farms. And it's just, I mean, it's beautiful. Like, there's really not a better site uh, to go. I mean, it's, it's. and for anybody that doesn't know, what happens at Woodford there on campus or on that campus doesn't actually, like, all that stuff they're producing doesn't actually go into Woodford. Like, it's just a percentage of what would actually go into it. So they have their, their main facility in uh, downtown Louisville that produces the the bulk of everything that they do. My daughter and son will actually did marshmallow in three, I think. <clears throat> oh, oh, marshmallow. Eh? I'm going to get to that. I was supposed to go to Louisville to visit in the first week of September, but she told me I should probably wait because of what's going on. Well, I mean, it depends what you're coming here for and where you're going. Uh, downtown is kind of, hit and miss right now it i mean all the all the places are boarded up it's not the it's not the prettiest scene or prettiest time to come but you know if you're coming to do you know uh you know distillery trips or anything like that as long as you book everything in advance you might be okay um it's can be a little bit different because they're following all kinds of different guidelines and stuff like that but we just went to bullet yesterday and we were there and we had the whole place to ourselves, the whole pick team. There were six people there and they had the distillery closed. So it was just us and Alyssa, the tour guide slash barrel manager slash uh, historian slash everything. I mean, she did everything. She was the only person there uh, except for the people that were actually in the distillery, you know, milling grain and doing, you know, fermentation and stuff like that. But it was really good. Sounds perfect. Yeah. It's, a, it's like a, it's a breath of fresh air because usually, you go to distillery and there's, you know, you're one of, you know, a couple hundred people there that day. And granted, you get to be kind of unique because you're there doing a barrel selection. But sometimes it, uh, it is, it is nice to have the whole place by yourself sometimes. There it goes. Eric, Eric, everything's fine. Book in advance. Talk to your bourbon friends. So just keep that in mind. You, you could be okay coming here. Probably early October now. Yeah. I'd say so. It's too hot out there anyway. <laughs> Honestly, today was great. I think we're getting down to like mid 70s right now. So it's uh, it's actually getting pretty good now. Yeah, we never get above mid 70s and we have no humidity. Whew. I'll tell you what, number three, num number three is that, that juicy fruit nose is really starting to stand out now. I agree. It was there. Love the taste on number three. It's almost like a, it's like a s'mores. Like you get that marshmallow, yep. a little bit of chocolate. When I say yep. chocolate, it's like it's like a dark, like bitter <clears throat> chocolate, dark cacao kind of thing. You're almost like baking chocolate. Mm hmm. It's really good though. Oh, and Eric says, don't stay out after 2 a.m. because nothing good happens. And then Kendrick said, pretty much everything good happens after 2 a.m. <laughs> I haven't seen 2 a.m. in a while, though. I haven't either. <laughs> you know, for all being the same proof, they all have slightly different 
finish. Yeah, they're all slightly different. And there's no real burn, but there's a lot of flavor in the finish. I would say three probably has the longest finish of any of them. I would agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. One's got the shortest. Mm -hmm. Well, you want me to? Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll, I'll. Now that we've tasted through, I'll kind of spill the, uh, spill the beans on what they had on their tasting notes here. So on number on batch one, I was like number one batch one. <laughs> Brett, I mean, I, I thought you had this card, man. So batch one, it said dried apples and pears with honey. I mean, you called you called apples on the first one, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. So dried apple and pear fruit are dusted with a cinnamon spice and sharpened by a dash of citrus oil and cedar aromatics and then softened with a slight sweet honey glaze. I wonder who gets paid to write these. Yeah, really. It's like a, it's like an editorial. You got to like make a movie sound better than it is. Like if you're trying to sell it, you know, in a blog or something like that. All right. So number two, they said it was... Let's. I'll see if we can get this citrus and peach with sweet aromatics. Mm, I'm not too sure if I get too much peach in there, but no, no peach. Maybe a little citrus. Yeah, I think citrus is pretty common though amongst a, a lot of things though. But they also said that it's soft and smooth with hints of sweet peach and apricot fruit. Brightened with a touch of caramelized orange peel, layered over freshly sawed oak. Well, I did definitely get the. Uh, I like I like freshly sawed oak. That was pretty interesting. Paul Clark says the dogs are barking. They gotta like it. So, <laughs> all right, batch three. What they wrote here. I mean, this one's this. You could write this literally for any bourbon. Floral spice and dried dark fruit. I mean, we thought, oh, I swear. Rick, we might be on point on this one. So look, it said, a rich, intense baking spice medley enlivens a deep layer, enlivens, not enlivens, enlivens a deep layer of dried dark fruit with bittersweet chocolate and seasoned oak cuddled with a drizzle of caramel. So the dried fruit is the juicy fruit. And we did I mean, some bittersweet dark chocolate. Yeah, we said something. We said chocolate. Yep. I mean, like I said, I would say you could probably switch out a little bit of that caramel with our marshmallow, uh -huh. and you're in there. The only thing probably missing is like a graham cracker. I don't know if I'm really getting graham cracker on it, though. Yeah, I never got the graham cracker, but the marshmallow and chocolate, yes. Yeah, I get that. Mm -hmm. Almost a weak chocolate milk on number two. A weak chocolate milk? Yeah. Like... <laughs> Like you just you just put like just a, like a teaspoon and that's about it. <laughs> Cocoa pebbles milk maybe. Oh, there you go. Oh, see now you're speaking Ryan's love you language. Have there. cereal in there somewhere. Yeah, if if we didn't go buy a barrel selection without talking to breakfast cereal, it it wouldn't be right. Percent Cocoa pebbles milk. How about that? Not skim. <laughs> yeah, I do love Cocoa pebbles. Mm-hmm. Good thing we got some more with us here. We can we can try this for a second round. Yeah, I poured all mine in the glass at once and realized, well, that's probably quite a bit too much. <laughs> well, good thing is you can always pour it back in and save it for later if you want. Yeah, yeah. That and, you know, we've done it on a, a few different barrel selections. I don't know if it would happen with this because it's a little bit different. You know, we went to Bullet yesterday, and when we were actually doing the tasting, we said – well, how long will it take for these to get bottled? And they're like, oh, they're already bottled. We're like, what? So so they actually go and they bottle them before they actually even put them in the single barrel program. I think it's uh, pretty aggressive, I guess, if you, if you say to do that. What if you don't like any of them? I know. It's funny because the way it works at Four Roses, uh, you know, after talking to Mandy the way that they do it over there is that if a barrel is in a lineup, usually they have anywhere between like seven to 10, uh, sometimes six, but usually seven to 10. And if a barrel goes through, I think it was like three, four or five times and doesn't get selected, then that barrel is out of the single barrel program and just goes and gets dumped into a batch. So I guess, uh, I guess at Bullet, they're, they're very, 
like I said, they're aggressive. They, I think they know what they know. And uh, very confident. Yeah, very. There you go. I like that. Very confident in what they're thinking there. <laughs> Matthew Layton, it gets sent to total wine, <laughs> which actually is probably not completely false now, not just total wine, but you know, just anybody that says, like, yeah, just go ahead and send us a, a, a barrel of whatever, send us a barrel pick, mm -hmm. put our name on it. Yep, it happens. We, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, our I should say our. You know, we all run this. We run all of our barrel selections, not all of them, but most of them through Keg and Bottle out of San Diego. So shout out to Tony. Uh, he's the one that makes this all happen for us. And, you know, we're doing, I think, like 25 barrel selections through him. So far, I think we've done 20. Well, we got this tonight. And then Ryan and I are going to Russell's, or sorry, going to Wild Turkey next week to do two barrels of Russell's. And then that's going to be 27 barrels that we've selected so far in 2020. So a lot. Of, oh, dude, it's been a lot. Uh, so oddly enough, my goal was to do just 20 barrels and I have a feeling we're going to do 30 because you can't see it, but here on the corner back over here, uh, is balcones. We got some samples sent in from there. And then we're also talking to Cedar Ridge out of Iowa about possibly doing a barrel pick there. And then we still have other distillery. We still have another four roses to go. Um, we still got a lot of stuff to do still. So going to be uh, exciting to kind of wrap all that uh, all that stuff up but anyway i got a little off topic there in regards of uh, what we were talking about <laughs> well behind me i got my keg and four barrel picks that we just bought last week there you go have you opened them up yet i opened the old elk it's amazing i told you that's what I, I i'm trying to tell people not to sleep on it you know they everybody's all like oh old elk blah 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 but that wheat whiskey man it is good it was and amazing and yeah, the four like, oh. is only a couple hours away from me. So once we open back up, I'm going to go pay them a visit. Yeah, I mean it's it's really good. I'm personally not a fan of the uh, you know the the bourbons that they had sent. It just it needs more time, even at five years old. But that wheat whiskey, it it was really really good. So yeah, I want to give me a couple more bottles because that was just amazing. Well, I think you're in luck. I think uh, the last tier goes tomorrow, and then after that, it just gets opened up, and anybody can buy as many as they want. So good. Oh, Billy says, get a Bowman pick. You know, we've tried. I have I have tried to fight tooth and nail to make that happen. Um, and I guess that's where I got off track. Uh, the Sazerac reps, man, out in SoCal, they're just, I don't know if they're, I don't want to say they're clueless, but they definitely don't cater to us. <laughs> so uh, they continually tell us that, oh, sorry, we can't do Bowman. It's just not in the program, blah, blah, blah. And... Every single every single year, we're like, "Hey, where's our allocation? What kind of barrel picks we can do?" And they're like, "Oh, sorry, you didn't get any." And we're like, "Wait a minute! Like, we got he's got nine stores in Southern California, and you're telling me we don't get a single barrel?" And and when COVID hit, they actually gave him two barrels. They got him a Blanton's and an Eagle Rare, and he was going to give them to us, but they said, "Sorry, you don't get to go to the distillery and select them. It's just going to be sent to you." And I said, "Well, never mind. I don't want them." So. Uh, unfortunately that's how it works. And, you know, they said that you couldn't go to the distillery and do it. And literally the next day I'm on Facebook and I see liquor barn at the distillery doing barrel selections. So I, I sent that wow. over to Tony and I said, go light up your sales rep because they're just blowing smoke up your ass. They're just full of it. Oh dude, they're, they're the worst man. I'm telling you. I mean, it's, and it's not Buffalo Trace's fault. It's, it's, it's the distributor out there. They just don't know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, three's doing really well for me. Yeah, I'm starting at the very beginning with one. And I'm still man, once finish just dies off. It does. It's, it's just gone. I mean, it was it's like drinking oak water. There's really there's nothing there. What about a Breckenridge distillery pick? Because they're just down the road for me too. We can we can do a lot of things. Like I said, I just want to make sure we when we select something, it's going to be something that you know we're all we're all bourbon enthusiasts, right? Like, and that's that's what I want to make sure that we select something that we can stand behind. I actually haven't had a whole lot of experience with with Breckenridge, so I'd have to at least try it to make sure it would 
meet up to I, I hate I hate being like that person, but like meets our standards. Like I just want to make sure that it would be something that we stand behind and we know that we selected a really good barrel and not we just selected the only good barrel they had sort of thing. When you're done, send me your address and I'll send you some samples because I've got all their stuff here. Oh, good deal. Sounds good. Well, uh, we'll do a little trade too. I'll, I'll send I you just, some stuff. You know, I bought them at their distillery, so they're not special ones they sent me. They're just ones I picked up. There you go. <clears throat> Sounds like it. All right. Now I'm going back to two. Way better than one. Mm -hmm. Two and three are definitely better than one. You get more of like a like a rye bread on two. Maybe a little maybe a little sweet corn bread too. But more toasty on two. Mm-hmm. For sure. Now, Brett, you got some lot you got some fans over here. They're all like, yeah, represent the Rockies. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm a Rocky Mountain guy. And 291, you should try that one too. We have had them on the podcast before. I actually got a I got a bottle back here. I'm a I'm a fan of the rye. I think the rye's pretty good. I think I did see that podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're good people. All right. Moving to three. Nose is good. A lot of those deep flavors of secondary barrel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I am. Uh, I'm I'm writing something because we're getting ready to. Uh, I don't want to announce it too early because it'll be, it's still like in the works. But we're working on a, a a new, a replacement item for Patreon swag, and so last night I was watching one of Fred's videos on like how to taste whiskey like a pro, and so he always talked about how to swirl the glass and wash the legs, and as you're swirling, the aromas start coming up, and I'm now I'm I picture myself doing it like or thinking of it like as i'm doing it so as i'm swirling got a lot more of those aromas start coming up as you swirl i've watched that video too because i'm a big fred fan he's a he's an awesome guy that's what I, I feel bad we we i think it's just now over but we had interrupted the uh or had gone live at the same exact time that the bourbon wo women's thing was actually going on but yeah. they're doing it all weekend long so i won't get in their way tomorrow and in Sunday. Yeah, I'll watch the replay of that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's good. It's it's fun to kind of see everybody joining into this, you know, online live streaming and stuff like that. Um, you know, we are thinking heavily about doing a, a Whiskey from Home Part 2. Uh, I know we had a, a, you know, we were kind of like the first ones to do it and it had a lot, a lot of good success. I mean, we had, uh, it was over, at this point now, it's over 15,000 people that have, you know, watched it. So or like tuned in for a little bit of it, or at least watched a session. So uh, knowing that we hit those numbers makes me itching to do it again. I was one of those people. Yeah, it's awesome. But we're not going to do it for three days. Like I want to do like pack it in like five or six hours. Yeah. And so you yeah, you, you don't have to worry about like, oh, like I want to go do this. I'll do this. I'll come back later. Like I just want to have like an action pack, like five or six hours and then it's over. It'd be perfect. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think the thing is, you know, like with bourbon women and, uh, you know, KB, KDA, the, you know, they're doing the bourbon affair. Uh, it's typically a, a multi-day thing. So they're trying to recreate it in a virtual format. It's tough, though. It's really tough to do that. So hopefully uh, they have a good turnout for it. Well, guys, does it really need to come down to a vote? What do you think? I feel I feel three is just leaps and bounds above the other two. Three because two's sweet, but three lasts longer. It's last longer. I think it has a little bit more rounded finish on it. <clears throat> How about you, Rick? You've been quiet over there. What are you thinking? Well, I'm probably leaning towards number two, actually. Are you? Three's a little bit of a slap in the face. I'm not used to drinking the heavy, high-octane stuff like you guys. 
<laughs> oh, we'll send you some good stuff then. I'll tell you, I I, uh, I showed a, I had a picture I put on Instagram. It's behind my bar. Uh, let me let me grab it real quick. Um, show everybody. Two is really good. There's a few different barrels. So I had the opportunity to have um, Danny Kahn, the master distiller from Barton 1792. Uh, he came over, recorded at my place, and it was really cool. He he was just like, you know, what do you what do you bring to somebody that that has probably tried everything? And I said, Danny, like, there's no way I've tried everything. It was like, just just come over, man. Like, we'll we'll just hang out and talk. And so he brought some barrel samples over, and it is some of the highest proof bourbon I have ever tried. So there's a there's one on the bar. I didn't grab it, but it was super, super dark. But I just grabbed two just to kind of show you. So this first one, if it zooms in there, is 150 proof. Wow. Oof. And the next one goes even stronger here. This is the, the, the strongest one. 161.2 proof. Do you have to sign a waiver to drink that stuff? <laughs> yeah. Just don't put anything flammable next to it. I don't think I've ever had a bourbon above 138. No, me neither. That was the, uh, it was definitely, like I said, it's, it's the strongest bourbon that I have ever tried in my life. And it, odds are, and the thing is, these are all over 12 years old. So it doesn't taste like, you know, lighter fluid or anything like that. It's, it's really, really good stuff. And unfortunately, these will never see the light of day at this proof. No, they won't. So, no, so they they get blended into a twelve year old batch that they're going to be coming out with. So, another seventeen ninety two twelve year. But you have the memories in the sample. Yeah, I, and that's what I was like. I'm going to savor these. That's for sure. All right. Well, I would say you know, fellas, like we can probably come down here to to kind of talking about this at the end, but. Uh, I think the votes might have you on this one, Rick. I think we might be two to one in favor of three. If we choose three, you're gonna be, you're gonna be really upset at us. Oh no, I would drink it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think I think three for myself. Uh, I mean, it's definitely got like I said, it's it's s'mores minus the graham cracker, um, yeah. but it's got the nose and, and the nose profile hits some of the, those typical Woodford double Oak notes. If anybody's ever had it before. Um, I mean, it's just, it's a very strong, uh, you know, dried fruit nose that comes off there and everything like that too. Or juicy fruit. Just as, stick as around well. longer. Yeah. Yeah. Longer. Yeah. I just did them both again. And I still think three is going to be the one I would pick. Mm -hmm. Two is really good and sweet, but three just lasts longer. I agree. I think, I think for me, um, it's going to come down to the finish. Like, what's what feels like it's something that's unique, uh, something that lasts just a little bit longer. And I think three lasts the longest out of all of them. And at ninety point four proof, I, you know, we probably couldn't ask for anything more than that. Right, because it doesn't burn and it just has great flavor. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Uh, let's see. Eric Carico asks. Uh, have we ever numbered the stickers that go on bottles? As in, like, if we have like 150 bottles in a barrel, do we like put a number next to it? Uh, no, it's just too much effort. <laughs> Usually, people are just happy with the sticker. I, putting the numbers on them is is a whole other level. And the last thing I want to do is burden our friends at Keg and Bottle by actually writing numbers on every single one. Yeah, that could be a hassle. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the other thing is like you know people are you know they. They wax dip like four roses bottles and crap. I'm just like, oh come on! Like it, I mean, you're, you're playing into everything else. It, I guess it looks cool, but I, I can't sit there and send a, a you know, a, you know, twenty cases to California and tell them to go wax dip bottles and then wrap them up and then ship them. And it's just not going to happen. So we're just happy. We're just happy we get the barrels and, and we're able to select them and get them out to subscribers so that's that's the we best part the same day we ordered so they were on top of it they uh they were ready for it let's put it that yeah, way they did really well yeah well especially with the four roses i mean they'd been sitting on one of the barrels of four roses for a while and so we had to wait for the other one to kind of come in and so once those were in right we, we wanted to wait till the other stuff came in too uh just so we could 
help everybody to save on shipping costs and everything like that too. So, well, good deal. So, everybody tuning in, three batch three is going to be our winner. Um, there is no more information than what you see on this label here. Just basically ninety point four proof, uh, distilled and bottled at Woodford Reserve Distillery. So. We don't get to know like what Rick it came out of or like what its original proof was or anything fun, but it's got great flavor. And anybody that is a fan of double Oak, I think this is better than the, uh, the standard stuff. That's for sure. It's definitely better than the standard. Fuller, richer than the regular uh, Woodford reserve. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Oh yeah. That's our winner. That's definitely our winner. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Cheers. Yeah. So, uh, Brett, Rick, stay on here real quick. I'm just going to do a sign off real quick. Um, Chris, you're asking, can you order in Ohio? Yes, you can order in Ohio. Screw your lousy attorney general. Um, we, we take care of it all through the Patreon community. So, anybody that's in Patreon, we will make sure that you get it nationwide. Uh, but again, thank you, everybody that tuned in for this barrel selection of Woodford Reserve Double Oak. Uh, this is our first time actually ever doing it. It's fantastic. I'm glad we came away with a great barrel. And who knows? We'll see if any, if everybody loves it. We're just going to keep doing them. And I think this is what we found out. I mean, we've got a lot of things. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Ryan and I, were going to Wild Turkey next week. We're going to be selecting two barrels of Russell's Reserve. That is going to make 27 barrels that we've selected so far in 2020. We are easily going to hit 30 barrels selected in 2020. And uh, we're really looking forward to be able to bring all these to the Patreon community. So if you want to get access to these bottles, if you want to uh, be like Brett and be like Rick and actually join in a barrel selection, uh, either live in person or virtually because of COVID and we can't be there in person. But this is actually fun to be able to do it because we're actually a saving people plane tickets. Uh, but B, there's a lot of people that, you know, of course, you know, Rick and Brett, they're, they're not located near us. It would be a, a plane ride for them to be able to come and do something like this. So being able to come together virtually and be able to do this is, is always fun. Um, so make sure you check us out, patreon.com slash bourbon pursuit. And we had an awesome podcast release today with Chattanooga Whiskey. Uh, and we're going to be talking to them about doing a single barrel as well. So fingers crossed and see if we can get our own too. Uh, but make sure you check out that podcast. Uh, my wife was pissed off of me because it was an hour and a half long. It was one of our longest podcasts we've ever done. And as an editor, she hated every single second of hearing me uh, for that amount of time. So uh, cheers to her for uh, you know, sticking with it and stuff like that. Uh, but thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, for anybody that doesn't or is part of Discord, I'll see you on cake day here uh, in a few minutes. We raised over $6,000 for charity for Bourbon Pursuit one year anniversary of Discord. So thank you to everybody that is a part of that. So cheers. Yeah, so cheers, everybody, and we'll see you all soon. Later. Cheers.